My name is Crispin Mwirigi Kedenji. Uh, I'm a born again Christian and I love Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Surely, why it not him who has been on my side, I could have died a long time ago. So I always thank him because uh, he saved someone like me. I was lost, but I'm found today. I was dead, but I'm alive. So uh, I come from Meru, Meru County, uh, Northimenti constituency, uh, Tima East Ward, in a village called Kachanka. And uh, I have a family that I love so much. My father and my dad and my mom, uh, Paul Kedenji and uh, Rosemary. And also I have three sisters, Frida, Karen and uh, Maureen. And I'm also blessed uh, married to one beautiful wife called uh, Jenida Kendi. And uh, also we have a little baby boy called Elanda Motueri. My journey growing up was interesting. <laughs> uh, I was so curious about life and so aggressive. Uh, I got an opportunity to go to school. My parents were so supportive and they really wanted to see the best out of me. So I went to primary level. I studied in quite a number of schools because of some issues here and there. Uh, during my primary time, especially when I was in around class five, class six, uh, there are some behaviors because of band company and uh, peer pressure from my, 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 my fellow students that uh, I, I got at that early age. Uh, things that really affected me even in future and uh, they didn't even affect my self-esteem as I was growing. Uh, there are some young friends of mine who are coming in school with some pornography magazines and uh, we, could, we could have a view of them and they affected my mind in one way or another. Uh, but God was faithful because uh, they did not really affect my studies, though it affected to some extent. But because of the support from my parents and always uh, having tuitions and what have you, I managed to continue to stand a hand and I finished class 8 and I went to high school. In primary school, uh, the class 8 I finished with was uh, our leader of visitation, uh, primary school. Then I went to, to high school. In high school, I went to St. Pius Seminary. Uh, in Form 1, I was focused, very aggressive in studies. I went to Form 2, no, in Form 2 because of peer pressure again. <laughs> uh, and band company also, I got into some weird behaviors. Uh, during entertainment times, you could have some students skiving out of school. They could come with some mirror. We could chew, some could come with some uh, sachets of alcohol, we could drink. And uh, it's only that the discipline of the institution was tough. Actually, I could not have finished uh, my high school level. But I thank God because the discipline was so high. So we were disciplined. I remember there's a day uh, after being more of a liar, I could trick my dad, get some money from him, to go to school. One day he followed me up and they realized that the money I, I asked him for was not for that purpose. So I remember the deputy principal really slapped me before my dad, and since then I stopped lying. And uh, after that, uh, I was able to complete my secondary school, and by God's grace, I got a good grade. I got a B plane and went to university. I joined uh, Egerton University back in the year 2009. When I joined uh, university, Egerton University, in the first year I was determined, leadership was found in me, and uh, when I vied for a position of the student leadership, I was given a chance, so I became a congressman, uh, and uh, when I was a congressman in the first year, it was something that had never happened before. So that gave me some proud pride and uh, fame as well. So many students knew me, and uh, when I was, you know, in second year, uh, I was overwhelmed by the by the by the being famous. Everyone wants uh, to associate with me. I had so many friends. Some were using alcohol. Some were drug addicts. Some were Christians. So now they all wanted to interact with me. But at that time, there is some knowledge I didn't have about life. Knowledge that many young people are suffering today. I didn't know how to say no. So the friends that always came to me when they told me, Chris, let's go for out, I could just go. I could not say no. 
he go out in Akuru town, have fun. At that time, I was not abusing any, alcohol, any drug or alcohol, so they could buy their drinks and I could just use sodas. But with the time, because of peer pressure, I ended up starting using alcohol, I started chewing mirror, I started smoking cigarettes. Someday I could go out there and find them uh, smoking weed or bangi. Uh, they could say that they are, they, they, are, they are chain. They are giving, they are doing a chain. So when I meet them there, they're in a circle, uh, they are smoking. I didn't know that there's no spectator. Uh, I thought I could just go and spectate them uh, smoking. But when I went there, they gave me, they passed it over. And I was not able to say no again. So I took it. And when I took it, I smoked. The past puff, I really coughed and uh, they laughed at me. They, they mocked me that you don't know these things. So now I had to show them that I know. And uh, that's how I got into, into, into bang. And uh, as time went on, um, I, I got addicted. I got addicted to a point that now I started boycotting classes. I could not attend classes. Lectures were not very much necessary to me. And uh, as time went on, I, I thought of quitting studies. In my second year, the first semester, the second semester, I was already addicted. Because every time in the morning, the friends that I was hanging with could smoke some weeds, then go to the lectures. Now for me, <laughs> I didn't have self-control. So I could smoke and when they want to go to the lectures, I could just feel like I don't feel like going to, to lectures. I just relaxed. The determination, the zeal to do studies was now coming out of me. I felt like just relaxing. I could take a nap even the whole day, just sleeping. And uh, in, the, in the next same now, uh, actually, I, I, I now was just thinking about money. How can I get money? How can I be a millionaire? Yeah, that's what I was just thinking about. And I was like, I'm wasting time. So the drug, the bangi, and the alcohol and everything I was using diverted my focus. So I saw that uh, education is just a waste of time. At the end of the day, what, what matters is the money you have. So that's when I was, I was introduced into pendling. I became a drug pendler. I started selling bang in the university and uh, I got a lot of money. And uh, during that time, actually it is by God's grace, uh, by now I even I, I, I should be or I could be behind the bars in prison because uh, when I was, I was at, the, at, the, at the peak of selling bang, that's when a mind came that I should leave the university. So I left the campus and went back home. I could not stay at home because my parents could be curious. Why are you here? Whereas others are in school. So I went to uh, some slums around Meru town called Majengo and I hired a small house. And that's where I started my business of pendling bank. So I continued pendling, smoking, and so many crowns of friends. And I continued pendling, smoking. I became so addicted that uh, when I pedal with the bang, as I wait for the clients to come, I could be just be smoking. And per day, I could smoke over 20 rolls of bang. That's where now my things started to go away. I became confused. I could not take showers. I became dirty. I could walk up and down in town, sometimes even without shoes. Now, the friends that I used to hang around with, when they saw the change of my behaviors, they started they isolated themselves from me. So I was now left alone. Addiction, it's a brain disease. It is a complex condition that is manifested through use of drugs and the substances, and despite their harmful consequences. So now, these things are harmful to me, but I still want more. The more I get, the more I want. Now it has come to a point, there is none to use. So that's a time now when I hanged. And hanging means I can't reason anymore. I can't think, I can't do anything without having to get something to psych me, to make me feel high. After some time when the friends left me, I had now no one to take care of me. I didn't have money to pay the rent. I had to go back home because home is always the best. I went home 
And there's one thing I always thank God for my parents. They did something that changed my life. When I went back home, they didn't judge me. They didn't chase me away. Instead, they welcomed me as if nothing had happened, as if I'm normal. And they gave me food. I was so hungry, I remember. But I was not having even appetite. So I could just uh, take little, then go. They couldn't come and try to share with me or ask me what's up. But I was, I was antisocial. I could not say anything. I could not talk to them. I was just in my own world. There's a time I contemplated suicide because of hallucinations. I could hear people calling me saying, Chris, today we want to kill you. We will cut your fingers one by one. We, we, we will, then we, we cut your legs. Then we, we cut your neck slowly. I, then I could think that, should I really wait for this torture? It's better I throw myself at the bridge and die ASAP instead of waiting for this um, torture. So those, those are the hallucinations that I was experiencing. So that night, the hallucinations were so devastating. Actually, there were men who were hired to kill me. In the yes. And they were given machine guns. And they all came and surrounded my house. And when they surrounded my house, they started shooting. When I had given up and my story was over, that was my turning point. That is when God himself intervened. Actually, were it not divine intervention, I could not be where I am today. I could not be alive today. That's when God took me and I, I, I woke up and went into my box. I had a box in my house. And after opening the box, there are four things that I found in my box that changed my life. The first thing that I found was my admission letter to Egerton University. So I just took it, and when I saw it, I could not believe it. Crispin Mwirigi admitted to do Bachelor of Arts in Sociology and Philosophy. Then I was like, when? You mean I was in the university? You know, I had forgotten everything. The memory was gone about education and everything. So I was like, when was I in the university? So that brought some focus again. It brought some challenge that you are not. The, you should not be where you are. So when I looked at myself, I was so untidy, dirty. Then I'm like, in the university? At me, look at where I am. So those were two different people. So the next thing that I saw was my transcript, my first year transcript. I had performed excellently. Sociology, I had gotten A's, uh, philosophy, A's, B's. Ah, then I was like, I was even performing like this. So as I continued, the other, the other thing I saw was a photo, a photo that we were taken with the student leadership from the vice chancellor, the dean of students, the registrars, the lecturers, professors, and the student leadership. We were in suits, man. And then I was like, hey, when was I sharp like this? Those things God and purposely put them there so that they can bring me back to my senses. And the fourth thing that I saw was a Bible. Praise God. I saw a Bible. And now because I was discouraged, I was hopeless, I opened the Bible. By the way, I did, not, I did not go in a rehabilitation center. I was rehabilitated by the word of God. Anytime the, the, the addiction hit, I could open the scripture. I read two verses, then pray, God help me. And that spiritual therapy did a difference in my life. Because now that night when I got into the house, the first thing I did, I sat and my parents were like, where have you come from? Because now I'm shaved, I'm in a suit. Ah, what happened? So now I narrated to them how I went to Isiolo yesterday. Today I've been to Kobo, and I want to go back to the university. Are you serious? I told them, yes, I want to go back to the university. First of all, forgive me for wasting your resources, your reputation. Even people could always laugh at you, saying that your son is wasted, your son has become a drug addict. You are, their their self-esteem was really affected because of my behaviors. 
So I was very remorseful and asked them, please forgive me. And I thank God because they forgave me. And my dad asked me to plan for a day when he could take me back to the university. And I told him, this week I'm okay. And so it was like on a Tuesday. So he told me, prepare and on Thursday, we shall go back. So he came, we woke up very early. We went all the way to Nakuru, Njoro, Igaton University. Uh, I follow up my registration. He gave me 24,000. I went and backed and, uh, and I got asleep. I registered and I started and got in the, in the system. The former friends, I really had to, 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 to come out of them. I avoided band company. That's what made me to succeed. And God intervened. I got a, someone, a family in Nakuru, a family that just hosted me. So I stayed in that family for two years without paying rent, without buying food, and I thank God for that family. And that's why I studied and I graduated in the year 2015. The effects of drug abuse are so many. The first one is that uh, it, it, it will affect your health. It has a healthy effect. The second one is that your, your dreams will become invalid. You can never achieve your dreams anymore. You live in a life of, of just, uh, not a real life, it's like a fiction. You are just there, you see? The other thing, it, it affects your social life. You don't interact with the people. You become an antisocial being, you know? And when you are antisocial, how can you, be, how can you uh, 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 succeed in life? You can't, because you have to interact with the people. So now it will start taking you down and down and down. The fourth is that it is a killer. It will kill you. It will kill you spiritually because it is a sin. It is uh, corrupting the body, which is the temple of the Holy Spirit. So it will kill you physically as well and uh, socially. Mostly many, many rehabilitation centers, uh, they have the, the treatment aspect, which uh, I don't dispute. It has worked for many. But uh, <coughs> the spiritual aspect is very vital. Uh, though in some rehab centers you find that uh, the treatment is given the higher percentage, but the spiritual is given a little percentage. That is why you find so many after being uh, discharged, they go and relapse. They go back to the alcohol, they go back to the cigarettes, they go back to the drugs, because they, they, they are not uh, surrendered to God. They are not surrendered their lives to God, to that higher power that has the ability to deliver. So I challenge some rehabilitation centers that are only embarking on treatment per se, that they should work out spiritual therapy because that is what for me helped me and that is what can help anybody because addiction is a spiritual problem. It's not a physical problem. It's, it's more of mind, it's more of belief, it's more of trust. I've written a book, I've been writing a book about my journey out of drugs because uh, for me to reach out to the whole country, to the whole world, it may be difficult. But through writing, someone can read and can get some inspiration, can get some hope that uh, they can be able to change. My journey out of drugs by Crispin Mwiriki Kedenji. Uh, when you look at this uh, cover page, this is a highway. It's our highway of life, a journey. We are all in a journey. And as you can see here, uh, there are bars that I'm all held captive by drugs. But at the end here, there is light. There is light. That is Jesus Christ, who is the son of righteousness. So he is the one who gave me hope and removed me from these uh, uh, chains. And now I'm free. I'm, 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 I'm free now. They can find it in bookshops. It will be supplied in all bookshops in this country. Uh, they can get it at the book, uh, textbook center. Uh, they can also get it at the National Library and read from there. Uh, with the time, by God's grace, I will also put them in the Amazon. They can read it from there. I want to begin an initiative of, of reaching out to many young people whereby we'll come together those that have been addicted and have been able to overcome so that we can now move out to empower and to motivate those that are still into addictions to know that they can overcome.
addiction is the worst thing that can happen in your life. And sometimes we get into addictions without our knowledge. Whether we are curious about drugs, we try them. And the first time you try them, they get hold of you. And every time you want to quit, it becomes difficult for you. I was there. Maybe you are watching and already addicted and you have given up. My advice to you, or my encouraging ones to you, is that for sure you can change. You can quit from drugs and substance abuse. It is possible.